Hi there, or moin as we say here where I live. Welcome to Analog Tidbits. As you might already know, I'm your host Steph and I want to serve you tasty bits all around film photography, darkroom work, cameras, film and more. In this video I want to explain how the Tidbit score is calculated that a camera or lens gets after we tested it. One thing is certain, ratings can almost never be completely objective. And so also my opinion about a camera, lenses, films and darkroom equipment is affected by my personal preferences, my style of shooting, the fact that I wear glasses and even by the size of my hands. To make the Titbit score a bit more neutral or independent, it consists of multiple factors that accumulate to a final score. This way it's quite comparable for different types of cameras for different target groups or shooting situations. But how does it work? First, we need to know for what kind of target group a camera originally was made. A pro photographer may expect other qualities than, let's say, an average user who wants to take family snapshots. And also a beginner has different needs than a more experienced user. If we look maybe at possible lens selections for a pro, this is far more important than for a beginner. An enthusiast for sure wants his camera to last, to be durable, while for a pro it might be easier to update his camera frequently because he can compensate the spendings by calculating these costs into his prices. Not that pricing is not important for him at all, but maybe not as important as for someone who put all his savings in buying a new piece of equipment after waiting for a long time. Of course, cameras were always built to the needs of their target group, so it's not very surprising when a pro-grade camera is more durable, more versatile and more pricey than an average snapshot camera these things one can expect. But a consumer camera that had proven durable over the last two or three decades is amazing and well worth some extra points. And a camera that is hyped and so extremely overpriced for what it is today deserves a little deduction. To make this short, we created a matrix that incorporates these expectations. Category ratings are then scaled by the value of this matrix to calculate the final tippet score. If a camera performs well in a specific category, but this was to be expected, it will get an average score. If uh, it's surprised because it maybe once was a phenomenally expensive pro tool, but today can be had for a moderate or at least reasonable price, uh, the result score will be higher. And the score will be lower if a camera falls short of expectations or simply offers poor performance in one or more categories. On the final scoreboard, you then can see both values. The category rating will tell you something about the true performance of the camera, while the final tidbit score also tells you how desirable or, let's say, tasty uh, the camera is today. But of course, you can also calculate your own score from these results. Just think about which categories are most important for you and give your own individual score to the camera. And always feel free to share your own thoughts and experiences with the camera, with films and with darkroom gear with all of us in the comments. That's just not only highly appreciated, it also helps to get even more objective view on the things we love. So thanks for watching the video, I hope this helps you understand how the Tidbit score is calculated and as always stay tasty, shoot film and see you in the next video.